this day. For our many close friendships, glory to God, may you hear our prayer. Guide us on forever. Thank you, Lord, on this day. Blessings and friendships. morning we light the candle of Christ to remind ourselves that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and that we are called after him to be lights of the world. And the candle or the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. Please join me in our call to worship for this morning. <coughs> Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invites all of us to be a part of the beloved community. God invites all of us to share in the good news. We are welcome just as we are. We are loved just as we are. In gratitude for all of this, let us worship God. Our first hymn for the morning is 433, All Creatures of Our God and King. Please stand if you're able.
Please be seated. Well, it's Thanksgiving weekend. Welcome, everyone, uh, to Thanksgiving Sunday service. How are we all doing? Good? Good? I hear some goods, some perfects. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> Well, you're the one, Don, who told me you only have two blood cells left. What's that all about? (laughs) Yeah, okay. Uh, um, So, our announcements for this morning, I'll just point out a few. Uh, We are having our community Thanksgiving dinner uh, tomorrow. It's between 5 and 6.30. So, if you don't have any Thanksgiving plans, it's a good time to come on out and enjoy a, a free meal. Uh, with good company, Um, and uh, yeah, if you still want to volunteer, anyone who would like to come, uh, let me know, but we've got plenty of volunteers, more than I thought we were going to get, so I'm pretty happy about that, and uh, yeah, that's our Thanksgiving meal, it starts at 5, so if you want some food, come on out. Um, A little note on elder elections, again, As we reported last week, we're closing the ballot box as of October 15th. So that's the last day that you can get uh, a note into the ballot box of someone you um, are are nominating to be elected to become an elder. Um, And uh, just a note as well, uh, if, you know, it doesn't feel like the right time right now, we are actually having an election next year as well. And so there's always time uh, next year if this year doesn't work out and you were thinking, you know, maybe I was thinking about doing that eldership thing. Um, uh, give it another year and, and, and return to it. Uh, and then for anyone interested, the WMS, the Women's Missionary Society, is going to have a Thanksgiving Zoom meeting on October 11th at 1 p.m. And that's just in the Shaw Room down the hall there. Um, oh, I guess I should uh, announce my Bible study. Uh, uh, I'm going to have a Bible study. I was planning on starting it this Wednesday, but I have an appointment with the endo- endodontist, it's called, I think, uh, and he's going to dig into my teeth. And so I'm going to have to go one week ahead. We're going to start it on the 18th. And so it's going to be a three-week Bible study. And I think going into Wednesday, November the 1st. And um, uh, in the mornings at, uh, what was it I said, 10 a.m. or 10.30? I always, I decide, 10 a.m. and then 7 p.m. I'm doing two two a Wednesday. So come on out, 10 in the morning, 7 p.m. And uh, we're going to be talking about um, the Bible. And so next week, I'll have the topic nailed down, so I'll let you know what it's actually about. But you know the times. And so with that out of the way, let us get down to worship this morning. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you uh, this uh, Thanksgiving Sunday, and uh, we just wish to adore you, to worship you, and we come before you to confess that we do not always act as we should act, but we are thankful, Lord. We are grateful that you have given us a pardon in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for that Son and the work that he did on the cross to save our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so I say to you that just as surely as Jesus Christ died and was raised on the third day, as surely as that is true, then just as surely I say to you, your sins are forgiven you. And so I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please greet your neighbor with the peace of Christ.
more kids want to come up. Kids young and old. Come on up. What's going on, guys? How was Grandma's house? Good? Yeah? Yeah? How's it going? It's Thanksgiving. Oh. What do you guys do for Thanksgiving? Food? Mostly food? Me too. Are you guys doing turkey? Turkey. Do you guys like turkey? Yeah? Turkey and ham? Oh, ham's even better. You like ham better? Oh, nice. What about stuffing? Stuffing is my favorite part of Thanksgiving. You don't like stuffing? No? Oh, man. Mashed potatoes and gravy? Yeah. Everyone likes mashed potatoes and gravy, right? Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Hey, quiet down over there. Pumpkin pie. What's better, pumpkin pie or apple pie? You like apple pie? You never had pumpkin pie? You know? You don't like pumpkin seeds? So you suppose you don't like pumpkin pie, eh? Eh, you might like it. It doesn't really taste like pumpkin. Pumpkin doesn't really taste like anything. You ever, you ever tried to eat some pumpkin? No? It doesn't taste very good. They put a lot of sugar in pumpkin pie. I think that's what you're tasting usually. Well, what's, what's Thanksgiving all about? It's about food, and it's about giving thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's true. It's about giving thanks. So what are you guys thankful for? Food? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> thankful for food? All right. So one food in particular. What's your, what's your favorite? Take a pick. You like cranberry sauce. So you don't like stuffing, but you do like cranberry sauce. See, I was the other way around, and now I just like it all. So what about you? What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Mashed potatoes? Nice. Yeah, mashed potatoes. Put some butter in there. Yeah, I heard he makes the best mashed potatoes, eh? That's not bad. We're thankful for mashed potatoes. We're thankful for, what did you say? Oh, you mashed potatoes. You like cranberry sauce. Would you just eat a whole meal of cranberry sauce? Yes? yes? <laughs> That's delicious. Okay. What are you thankful for, Bella? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You can do repeats if you want, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that's okay. Well, we're going to say a prayer of thanksgiving today. It'll be repeat after me, okay? And, uh, and while you're saying this prayer, I want you to think of things you're thankful for. I'll be thankful for the pumpkin pie because I know you guys haven't tried it yet. Apple pie is good too. All right. Do what you do when you pray. And uh, repeat after me. Dear God, God, thank you 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 for for mashed potatoes potatoes and pumpkin pie pie and cranberry sauce sauce and maybe even even some turkey too. (laughs) All these things we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. <laughs> Go down to Sunday school. A responsive psalm for this morning comes from Psalm 80, verses 7 to 15. Please read with me. Restore us, O God of hosts. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mighty cedars with its branches, and its shoots to the river. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Amen. 
Amen. Our reading for this morning comes from the epistles, the letter to the Philippians. Chapter 3, verses 4 to 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, and as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I usually usually stick to the Gospels because... Uh, Jesus has less of a heavy tone than Paul tends to do. But um, today we are reading, or we have read, from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. And Paul uh, is imploring his readers to leave behind the past and to keep their eyes fixed on Jesus. These people called the Philippians, a church Uh, in a city uh, called Philip or Philippia. And the goal that Paul is striving towards is to know Jesus Christ. And that's it. That's all. He leaves behind him a lot of baggage, right? Paul was a deeply religious person. He had studied more than his fair share of Scripture. He was a scriptural expert, Right? He had zeal for God, as he said. He was a Pharisee, uh, one of the religious officials that Jesus liked to fight with or spar with verbally. He didn't actually fight with them. But he would, uh, he would have some strong words to say to the Pharisees. And Paul recognizes that. He recognizes that his entire life is not, well, it is something he could boast in if he thought the way the world thought. But he realizes that when he meets Jesus, all that stuff he thought he could boast in just falls away. And as Paul says, he, he knows nothing else anymore. Even though he was an expert in scripture, he was a super smart guy, he was zealous for God, it all falls away his whole life. In fact, he admits that he no longer considers himself an expert in anything. It's a sign of humility that as a younger man, before he came to know Jesus, he would not have displayed, but now he knows Jesus and he recognizes that he has to leave everything else behind. And he spends his life reaching out to Christ who first reached out to him. So if you know the name of Jesus, then you too are in the same place as Paul is in this letter. About the Christian life, often what seems difficult about it is our baggage, our misconceptions about God, our misconceptions about how we should follow, 
and get to know God. The fact is, in reality, as Paul says, God's already reached out to you. He's already reached out, and all you have to do is reach back for him. But you might be asking yourself, well, how do I do that? I've tried everything my whole life, maybe, and I don't seem any closer to God than I did when I started. And I say to you, remember that this isn't something that changes your life overnight. In some sense, it does, but in some sense... It doesn't because, you know, even Paul, with his sudden conversion experience, he admits he's on his way. He's not yet at the station, even though he's leading the entire early church. Every Christian who is currently a Christian, more or less, knows the name of Paul and respects him as an authority on the things of Christ. But even he says, I'm only on my way. I haven't gotten there yet. Because he recognizes it takes time to even get on our feet, let alone start running the race and pressing on toward the goal and finally completing the race. He recognizes this. And so we have to ask ourselves, what in the meantime are we supposed to do? How do we run the, the race of faith? How do we do that? So there are four things that we can focus on as we're pressing on toward the goal that will help us keep our aim on Christ. I think the first, it's humility. The second is love. The third, of course, because it's Thanksgiving weekend, is thanksgiving or gratefulness. The fourth is prayer. So to start with, humility is important because without it, We're going to become disappointed along the way. We're going to trip and stumble. And sometimes it's going to feel like we have to start back from square one. Don't expect yourself to be good at this right from the beginning or even toward the end. Don't rely on yourself, but rely on God. Realize to begin with that God does not expect perfection from you right now. Rather, God just wants you to simply try. Keeping a humble attitude in everything we do, even as we try our best, helps us not to search for God in all the wrong places, in status, in ability, in performance. Remember, those Philippians to whom Paul is writing, they they were a very proud people, all of them, Roman citizens. They took that citizenship very seriously, their status, their place in life. And Paul recognizes too, he himself was a Roman citizen as well as a high-ranking Israelite. But he taught the Philippians to check their pride in their citizenship, in their wealth, their possessions, their social and professional status. He didn't teach them to completely revoke these things, but rather to hold whatever station they held in life in all humility. And having humility in all things, seeing clearly the path of Jesus, which lies before us at every turn. And that's humility. And then there's love. Love is the reality of God. God has relationship within himself, Right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three people in one union. And we're meant to behave in the same way, as if relationship is a part of who we are. A part of our very being. Learn to love well. We're not meant to run the race alone. Without others who are running the race as well, right next to us. We're not trying to win the race but rather to strive for the goal with one another and helping each other along the way in love. This means recognizing when others falter and supporting them when they cannot stand on their own. It's what the church was from the very beginning. The Philippians, despite their pride, they were a loving community. They helped the poor, they supported one another, they took up collections for those in need. 
They visited the sick and the helpless, provided for the most vulnerable among them. So remember that you too may be that vulnerable person at some point in your life, at some point along the road as you walk this walk, as you run this race. You will stumble and you will fall and you'll need to learn to rely on others. So start out by loving and love well and love deeply and broadly. Then we have Thanksgiving. I had to add it to this sermon because it is Thanksgiving Sunday. Elsewhere in his letters, Paul teaches us to give thanks in all circumstances. Now, Paul was a special sort of guy, and I'm not going to tell you to walk around giving thanks in all circumstances because I don't succeed in that myself. But it's true that giving thanks is even scientifically proven to improve our outlook on life. So even just giving thanks for one thing a day, that's a great way to start. Give thanks for the day itself, for the sun when it's shining or the rain when it's raining. There are circumstances in which giving thanks can be difficult. But there is no circumstance in which giving thanks cannot help us to draw nearer to God, to feel God's comfort. So give thanks when you can. Give thanks. And finally, speaking of drawing close to God, there is prayer. And I think we all falter at some point in this place. I know I've burnt out on prayer over and over and over again. When you burn out, the first thing that goes does tend to be prayer. But that's okay. Remember, prayer grounds us, heart, soul, mind, and body in God. It's the practice of consciously talking to God bringing before God our hopes, our dreams, our fears, even our frustrations and complaints. We have the opportunity to bring these things to God in prayer and to listen to God's voice speaking to us. If you sometimes or maybe often can't hear God, that's okay too. But don't give up. If you haven't prayed in a while, don't feel bad that you haven't prayed. The last thing God wants you is to feel ashamed that you haven't performed prayer properly in some way. Prayer is for us. It's a gift from God, meant to be a comfort rather than another source of pressure and frustration in our lives. Prayer is meant to be life-restoring. And it's okay if you can't pray for more than Five minutes, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, that's okay too. But whatever you do, do not be afraid to bring yourself to God in prayer. In other words, if you can't pray, at least say your prayers. The life of faith in Jesus Christ, it's not a complex formula to figure out. It's not a burden meant to crush us under its weight and show us how small we are. It's not a task to be completed before moving on to the next. It's a walk. It's a walk. So walk with Jesus. Run with Jesus. Crawl with Jesus if you have to. But be humble. Love well. Give thanks. And pray as often as you can. Listen for God's voice. And go where God is leading you. This walk is not a short one. And it leads into the next life. But it is doable. And one day, you will see the face of Jesus. And know that you have run the race. You have reached the goal. You will know that you have come home. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is 434.
before the beauty of the earth. And please stand if you're able. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters in Christ, each week we repeat what we believe as a Christian people. So please, once more, repeat with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now please join us in singing our offering doxology. Your offering will now be received. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your bounty. We thank you for your generosity to us. And in response to that, we bring before you this offering. We pray that you may bless it in Jesus' name, and that it may go to do the work of the church. Dear Lord, all these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we have come before you to worship and praise you, to listen to the scriptures, to hear your word, who is Jesus Christ, speaking to our hearts. 
to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Lord, we now pray that the Holy Spirit may go out from this place and be with those who need it most. Lord, we pray your comfort over the people of this earth. We left up to you the faces and the names of those who need your presence, those who are hungry, those who are poor and sick, those who are experiencing famine, war, natural disaster, those who are having a difficult time for a variety of reasons. Lord, we lift up these people to you now. All these things we pray, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who was born among us, and walked with us, and talked with us, who ate with us and drank with us, who told us stories, and who taught us to learn how to pray as we pray that special prayer, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn for this morning is hymn 435, All Things Bright and Beautiful. And please stand if you're able.
Just a quick note from the kitchen. There's going to be tomato soup downstairs on this chilly fall day, and so please join us for that. And, well, uh, we're going to need peelers of potatoes and carrots for tomorrow's dinner. So anyone who wants to stay <laughs> to peel vegetables can if you want to. And now as you go from this place, go with the love of God, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May these things be with you from now until the end of time. Amen. Thank you.